Sunday School, Sunday School. This is Sherman and Lisa Cash. We are representing Mount Sinai Baptist Church in Rockingham, North Carolina. We have a Sunday School lesson today called Called in Authority. Yes. And this is coming from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. I'm going to tell you, this is one of my favorite stories about Jesus healing in the Bible. And every time I read it, it just enriches me more. And I pray that you all get something very good from this lesson. Now at Mount Sinai Baptist Church in Rockingham, our pastor is the Reverend D.R. Bennett. We have service at church, inside church, 10 o'clock a.m. every Sunday. We have the virtual Bible study at 7 p.m. every Wednesday, and we have virtual Sunday school. We usually try to have it at 7 o'clock every Sunday. Before we get into this lesson, I'm going to ask Mr. Sherman Cash to open us with prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to say thank you for another beautiful, glorious day. We thank you, Lord God, for all you've done for us doing and will do. We ask you to open our hearts and minds and understanding as we go through this lesson to gain better knowledge of the mighty God as you are. We love you, Father. We thank you. It's in the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 So I'm going to read the verses from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12 from the NIV version. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered that mat that the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is it easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of, of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. My, 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 my. So the goals for this lesson are, are probably more than we're stating, but we would like you to be able to summarize the account of the paralyzed man who was made whole in body and spirit and compare and contrast the different perspectives of everybody involved in this miracle. Okay. 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 All right. All right. So, so just a brief context of, of where this is, this uh, set of scripture is happening. Uh, Jesus had just healed a man of leprosy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was coming back to Capernaum. Capernaum is not where Jesus was born. Jesus was born in Nazareth. And this was a small town that was close by and really served as the home base mm -hmm. for his ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, Scholars believe that the house that he was going to was Peter's house. Okay. Because Peter lived in Capernaum. Yes, he did. And, and at this time, Jesus had already healed Peter's mother-in-law. Oh, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's get right into okay. it. Okay. I'll have you read verse one. Verse one. A few days later, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. 
All right, so like right. I said, we just, you know, that's just saying that people heard yes. that Jesus was coming back. Mm -hmm. That means people were spreading the word. Yes, true. Because yeah. Jesus had stirred up some excitement yes, he did. in what was going yes, on. He did. All right. You know, when we hear, hear a good sermon, uh, do our Bible study reading, we hear a good word, we're supposed to spread the word. We are supposed mm -hmm. to spread the yeah. word. That's exactly right. Verse number two. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. All right, all right. Standing room only. Mm. The, the word of mouth was so yes. much about Jesus and what he had done mm. and what he was saying that the house was completely crowded. Indeed. All right. You know, there's probably some who had faith to believe that Jesus could do what he said he, he was doing could do some probably just out of curiosity just to be in the number to see that's right that's right um the the good news because it said he mm -hmm. preached the word to them and the word is is the gospel yes. the good news. good news and so jesus was telling them about the the kingdom of god and how to live but every time jesus preached the word Usually miracle signs and wonders would follow. Yes. So, so like you said, there were some people that wanted to just see it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And as we get farther into it, we'll see that there were some scribes and Pharisees or teachers of the law that were there to just look for mistakes Indeed. and and to yes. prove mm -hmm. that he was somebody who was outside of the law. Uh -huh. yes. But but let's get into it a little <laughs> bit more so we can see what's going on. I, I just, you know, right now during the pandemic, we, we can't have standing room only um, gatherings for, for the word of God. But, but how about if we could be encouraged oh, yes. that sometime soon we will have the, the, free mm -hmm. ability to be able to gather standing room only and not make each other sick um and just take in what thus says the lord amen all right so for yes. i'm going to read verse three some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them all right now we don't really know much about why this man couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. We know he was paralyzed because the scripture says okay. he's paralyzed. Mm -hmm. But we don't know why he was paralyzed. Right. We just know that he couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. And I think for this particular uh, miracle, the importance is not really why he was paralyzed, That's true. Yes. but that he was paralyzed mm -hmm. and that his friends thought enough of his situation and they thought enough of Jesus to make it their business right, right. to get the man mm -hmm. to Jesus on this occasion. You know, I see too, it's not the situation that you're in that will put you where you need to be within Christ for his healing. But Jesus is so, such a wise teacher. He put it to us in a way to see that uh, what he can do and what he will do as an end result of faith and trusted in him. All right, verse number four. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat that he was lying on. Oh. So so you have to picture it. Now, mm -hmm. now, from studying this scripture and the houses at the time of this, it's not like our roofs today. Right. It's not right. like that, you know, we they'd be coming through plaster and cinder this was a thatch roof that you could pull apart because they they put them apart and put them back together seasonally but it still was an intact roof mm -hmm. that they opened up and so people would have to notice it can, can oh, you yes. imagine mm -hmm. jesus is standing there preaching mm -hmm. saying what he's saying and then there have to be some crumbs and something going <laughs> on that people have uh, to notice, uh oh, something, something is happening. Happen. Yes. Right. Yeah, I'm right. Even Jesus had to notice something was happening. That's true. But this tells you so, so these men are carrying him and they get to the outside of the house mm -hmm. 
and there's no room even to get to the door right. of the house. So they walk around and up on the roof yes. and start opening a hole and dropping the man down in. They didn't just plunge uh-uh. him down. They lowered, lowered him, him down. Yes. Okay. You know, I love that because of the termination. They, they couldn't get in, but you say, oh, well, I can't get in, so we might as well go back home. But they were determined to get their friend to Jesus because they knew that they got him there, he could heal him. Now, what, what I get out of that action is it took determination, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. and it took unity. You oh, know, yes. they, they all mm-hmm. had to be united in this effort. They all had to be, they, they had to be on one accord yeah. with each other. To even carry him. Right, mm-hmm. to carry him and to maneuver while, him up there and to lower him right. down without getting hurt. Indeed. All yes. right? Now, the other thing I want, you, want to think of is suppose we are gathering for something, and we'll, we'll keep it Christian. Maybe we are gathering to see a very special preacher or speaker. Maybe T.D. Jakes has come into town. Mm -hmm. Maybe Joel Osteen has come into town. You know, somebody who's a big name. And so when we find out that person is coming and they're giving tickets or selling tickets and and let's say it's sold out and we're crowded to see them. If there was some, somebody, if there was some people who showed up late without their tickets and needed to get it. Oh, I'm thinking of Benny Hinn okay. because you know he's known for his healing mm-hmm. services. So, so you know you've you've taken your time, you've gotten your seats, your tickets in advance, and somebody shows up in bad shape that really needs a healing and needs a miracle. Mm-hmm. Would you move out of the way and let them in? Mm-hmm. Just a thought. Mm-hmm. Just a thought. Or are you there for your reasons? Okay. You know, like you said, some of them were there. Because they really wanted to hear what Jesus said. Some of them were there because they wanted miracles that came with what, whenever Jesus spoke. Mm -hmm. And some of them were there just to try to prove what they believed in their mind, that he was not real and that he was not Mm -hmm. good for the people. So here we are in that crowd. We're at a Benny Hinn, you know, meeting. And if it was there was no room, but you knew somebody needed to get in there. They felt like the only way they're going to be healed is if they came in. Would you give up your ticket? Mm. Would you? Right, right. Okay, now let me change. It. Suppose it's a Christian music concert, or as you like to say, a singing. Okay, right. <laughs> and you got your tickets, uh-huh. and it's sold out. And now this poor old person comes with a group of friends and they say, please, please let us in. Would you move out of the way? Would you get your, give up your seat? Mm. Just a thought. Mm-hmm. Just a thought. All right. Verse number five. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Wow. Amen. Wow. Your sins are forgiven. Yes. And, and look. So mm-hmm. Jesus is, is, well, I guess the man is down in front uh-huh. of him now. Yes. And he's assessing the friends. Mm-hmm. He says, it says when Jesus saw their faith, this, these were the, the faith of the guys that were carrying right. them. When he saw their faith, then he looked at the paralyzed man and forgave him of his sins. Mm. You know, it was the determination of his friends. Now that's that's some that's some friends. They would go through that trial, the, the uh, work to do that to get this man to Jesus. It took work, it took faith, and it took unity. Well, that's true. That's true. And and all of us really want to have friends. You know, yes. on, on Facebook we we can have hundreds of friends, mm. but how many of those friends would be able to carry you when, and I'm not talking about strength, I'm talking about they have the faith that you need to get better. Mm -hmm. You know, so how many friends do you have there? I'm saying sometimes we go through seasons when we are down and we're struggling. Some of us have been there when I know I should pray, 
I know that God hears prayers, but right now I can't even pray. Mm. I can't even pray. I don't know what to pray. I can't pray long, you know. So do you have a faith that can a friend that can pick up where you're short mm-hmm. and have enough faith to go in with you? And not just a friend, but four, four. friends yes. that had enough faith to get this man to the place where he would be healed. Oh, so. We we want friends yes, like man. that. Hundreds of friends who you may not even recognize if you see them face to face is nice yes. to get a lot of likes. But you really want a friend that has enough of a relationship there you go. with God, yes. with Jesus yeah. Christ, to number one, discern that you don't have what you need mm-hmm. to get yourself better. But you know that God does, and you have enough faith That's right. to pray the prayers that I can't pray Indeed. or you can't pray. Intercede, interceding that's for That's right. That's right. That's a friend. That's a, that's, that's a true friend. Yes. Those, that's a very valuable friend. Indeed. That's a very valuable friend. So that's one thing. But the other thing is Jesus saw their faith and said, son, your sins are forgiven. So that's that's an interesting thing for Jesus to say. Mm-hmm. Now in the Old Testament, sickness and disease all was was often both of those things were often associated with sin. That's true. You know, like yes. when the children of the Israelites disobeyed God, then bad things would happen. Mm-hmm. Or, right, when Pharaoh was getting all those plagues because right. he wouldn't do what God said. Mm-hmm. But now we're in Jesus' time. So why did he say that? He said that for a few reasons. Number one, there are some teachers of the law there. There are, this is probably a mostly Jewish crowd, okay? Mm-hmm. Right. So they are un- going to understand that when he says your sins are forgiven, they're going to understand that because the Jewish people, that their, their Bible is the Old Testament, mm-hmm. the first five books of the Old Testament. So he's saying that, and as you'll see when we get into it, they're going to know that God is the one that it, forgives right. of sin. Mm-hmm. But he's also saying that because remember now Jesus knows your heart. That's it. That's right. He knows what you're thinking. He knows your heart. And he knew that that paralyzed man needed to hear that he needed to know that his sins were forgiven in order to be able to receive his healing. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, when we apply that to us, we may not be thinking that our sins or our guilt, our feeling of guilt for our sins is hindering us mm. in any way. But the truth is unconfessed, unrepented sin does put distance between you and God. Indeed, You just Indeed. can't approach him in the same way when you know that you have unconfessed Sins. Sins. Sins you have not repented of. You know, okay, now you know when sometimes you get caught in a in a bad situation. Mm-hmm. You're in, in the wrong place doing the wrong thing. And you know you're about to have a bad consequence. And you try to throw up that prayer, Lord, if you get me out of this, Foxhole I'll never do it again, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And it gets you out of it. And, and before you even lay your head down again, you are thinking of a way to do that same thing again, Indeed. but not get caught. Indeed. You, you know, when you um, ask God for forgiveness, he will forgive you, but you have to have a repentant heart. You have to be godly sorrow that the situation you're in, you're in, and you're going to turn and change your ways. And these, uh, uh, God knew once the paralyzed man sin was forgiven, he would have a clean slate. He could start over. He could get his prayers through, answered. And that's what we need to do. When we pray and ask God for forgiveness, we get a clean slate if we uh, are godly sorrow for what we are praying for and ask for. What do you mean by godly sorrow? You mean it. You don't, you're not just saying it by words. You de- you really mean it in your heart that you're sorry for what you done, done, what you was involved in and you ask God to forgive you for that sin 
and God, he will forgive you. When you when you have godly sorrow, you are not just sorry that you got caught uh-huh. in the yes. sin. Yes. When you you have godly sorrow, you may nobody nobody may have even have found out that you even did that sin, but the you God realize knows. that now I'm describing godly sorrow. Okay. You look at sin, that sin the way that God does. Okay. How does God look at sin? He hates the sin. Mm-hmm. And so when I'm doing something that is outside of the will of God and it is sinful and I see it that way, then when I repent, I honestly hate that sin. Mm-hmm. And I honestly really want God to, to not only forgive me of that, but help me never to do it again because I hate it like okay. he does. So then that's godly sorrow. Oh, okay. All right? Right. All right. And so when we have sin that we have not repented of, and we know it's a sin, mm-hmm. we feel like God probably is not going to hear my prayer. Oh. You know, sometimes people will say, is is there anybody who can get a prayer through? Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. That means they think they can't get a prayer through. Well, why would they, if they're saved, why would they think that they couldn't get a prayer through? Why would they feel like uh, God is not hearing their prayers or Mm. or answering their prayers? I'm saying most of the time when that happens, there's some sin that they know about that they haven't really repented of. Mm For whatever reason. Okay. Okay. You got to let it go. You got, you have to let it go. You have to let it go. All right. So I'm going to read verses six and seven. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there Mm -hmm. thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins, but God alone. Mm. There it is. The scribes. There it is. They know. Mm -hmm. They know, they, they know, they know that these are the teachers of the law. Right. So they know the law and they know who forgives sins. Mm-hmm. And any, the only one who can forgive sins is God. That's true. Yes. So when they're saying, why is this fella? Num- number one, they're mm-hmm. sitting there. Let's, mm-hmm. let's look at this. So remember back in this day, the teachers would sit. That's right. Mm-hmm. When they're teaching. Remember Jesus got in a boat and sat, sat down, down. And, yes. and taught. So these teachers of the law are coming to hear Jesus, but they didn't sit, they, they didn't stand up to, you know, with Jesus sitting down and teaching mm-hmm. them, they sat down. So that was showing everybody there that they came to debate okay. with Jesus. Right. They came and sat like I am still a teacher, meaning they are not recognizing Jesus as the master mm-hmm. teacher. That's he true. is the master yes, teacher. He is. They are interpreting the law, mm-hmm. trying to teach the word of God, and he is the word of God Indeed. wrapped in flesh. Okay? All in one. And all in one. So, so number one, they are sitting there, mm-hmm. and, and that's already saying that they are kind of close to receive because they are trying to give their knowledge. Indeed. Okay. okay. And then they, <laughs> right, here, here I am, I'm sitting there, Mm. waiting, just judging whatever he's saying and whatever he's doing to prove that he is not of God and he is outside of the law. Now here he tells this man, son, your, your, son, your sins are forgiven. Aha. Wait a minute. There it uh-huh, is. Uh-huh. He Now he <laughs> has blasphemed. That's true. Everybody so said. there I have it. I told you this man was not a good guy. <laughs> he is against God because uh-huh. he's trying to be God. Indeed. Oh my goodness. They didn't know. How much do the, that's what, what we call a scoffer. Mm. That's what the Bible would call a scoffer because you, you're trying to just throw the word of the God down. Mm-hmm. Like it's not as good as oh. it. So, so, and that's why I say the word, because Jesus is the word, yes, is. right? Yes, and yes. so that's what they're trying to do. Is just like blow this off and, and have everybody think this man is not anything good. It's just misleading. You. He's just misleading you. He's just misleading. you. Nah, How many people, and I'm talking to us now, miss our blessing miss the ability to receive Mm. something from the Lord because we are looking for something to try to prove our own thoughts are right. 
That is so about God and the things of God. And that is so true. So many, how many times we uh, won't receive the word because it's coming from a certain person. Right. You supposed to, if I'm receiving the word, you are supposed to do be like this, that, and the other thing. But God can use anybody to bring this word. And, and you miss, you miss your blessing. Yes, yes. Because you, you are only, you feel like you're only going to hear God if you hear it through this person or uh -huh. that person. Right. When God has chosen many people at many times to share what he wants to share. And God is in charge. You're not. Amen. Amen. So, so the, right. The point about that is if you are closed and not trying to receive what God has for you in certain instances, because you feel superior, mm -hmm. you're probably losing out blocking blocking some of your own blessings that's what you say you're gonna miss you'll miss out you'll miss out all right let me read verses eight and nine immediately mm -hmm. jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts and he said to them why are you thinking these things which is it easier to say to this paralyzed man your sins are forgiven or to say get up Take your mat and walk. Mm. Which one? <laughs> so, so look, this is what Jesus is doing. He's throwing it right back at them. Mm -hmm. He's so here they are. They they're thinking he's he's a blasphemer. Mm -hmm. He is yes. not God. He's a blasphemer because he said he this son you are healed of your sins, and Jesus doesn't even let it go around <laughs> and around in their heads. He just pulls it out, mm -hmm. and he's like, okay. So what would you have me say? Okay. Your sins are forgiven or get up, take your mat and walk. What would you do? Mm. Right. What, what kind of okay. answer can they give? Oh, no. Because they can't give an answer because they're not God. They don't have the ability to you, heal. You know, they, they must have been really stunned because this man, he said what I'm thinking. And it didn't really get out of my mouth good. Right, right. And number oh, one, he my. pulls it out of your head. <laughs> number two, he asks you a question that you can't even answer because you don't have the ability to heal. Mm -hmm. So so Jesus was showing them that either way, if I said, son, your sins are forgiven, mm -hmm. or if I said, get up, take your mat, and walk, I'm God. And you're not. I make those decisions. I make those declarations, and you can't. Uh, right. So that he was really just mm -hmm. slapping it he back did. in their face. He did. Right. And then and so just just mm -hmm. like they could have learned that day, and hopefully we will learn or have learned that God is God. Yes, He is. And and He decides how He's going to do things. Right. You know, God is so awesome that he can hit a bullseye with a crooked stick. You know, <laughs> God is, a, as I said, if, if we as a people, I can want to testify a little bit, receiving criticism and, and, and guidance, accept it and move on. As uh, one of my teachers would say, uh, so noted and do the right thing the next time. Right. Right. Criticism is just just that criticism. You take what you what makes you better, you leave what doesn't and keep growing. That's keep what I was going trying to and say. keep yes. keep growing. Um you made me think of something else when when we're talking about oh God doing things the way he wants to do it. Mm -hmm. God also says things the way that he wants to say it. And then I'm talking I'm talking about the Bible cuz we can all say if any time we have been studying the Bible or reading the Bible and we're looking at life and we're thinking of how things, what would be fair and what would not, sometimes we want to make the Bible say what we feel. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's but true. Mm -hmm. God says, he already said what he said. And he meant what he and said. And he says what he says the way he says it. And we get ourselves in trouble when we try to twist okay. it to be what we think. I see. You know, so so what a lot of times this is how it would sound. 
Well, what's what that is saying to me is okay. Oh, see now it's saying what it's saying, mm-hmm. and if it, you're you're putting it through your filter and making it saying what you're feeling, mm-hmm. then you can get yourself in trouble. And if you're teaching people, you can lead them astray. Indeed, so true. So so that's what I'm. So Jesus giving the example. What is easier to say is to me pointing out. That the Bible is the Bible. It says what it says, whether we feel good about it or not. That's what God wanted to say. Amen. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to let you read verses 10 and 11. Verses 10 and 11. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. So he said to the, to the man, I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. All right. So what Jesus did was both. He said yeah. both. First <laughs> yes, he did. said, your sins are forgiven. Mm-hmm. Then he said, like to the to the teachers, now watch this. Because I want you to know that the Son of Man, now why did he use the Son of Man? That the the only time we see the Son of Man before Jesus said this is when those Hebrew boys were in the fire. Okay. And they said, the, the guy said, the king, king said, said. The, I see three, three, I see, right, three, and one that looks like the son of man. Yes, he did. And so look, fast forward, now here we are in the New Testament, and Jesus is telling you and me right now, that fourth one they saw was me, me. the son of man. Amen. Okay? Okay, so yes. that, look, and so for any of those uh-huh. teachers mm-hmm. that also knew that, knew about Daniel and and the fourth one in there, he's letting them know that was I'm me, here. the son of man. Same All right. One. The yes. same one. The same one. Now you know if I kept those Hebrew boys cool in that fire and none of us got burnt. Mm-hmm. Nobody smelled like smoke. I can say what I want to say and watch what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Your sins are forgiven. Now, what, now go home. Now pick up your mat and walk. So so his ability to heal was was proved mm-hmm. proven both both spiritually when he said your sins are forgiven that heals you spiritually. Right. Now that's us. Before we get saved, we are spiritually dead. Mm-hmm. That's or true. or people say sin sick. Yes. Okay? Then when when we accept Jesus as our savior, our sins are forgiven. We're spiritually healed. Okay. Yes. Now, once you have that healing, you you have that clean slate mm-hmm. to be able to receive your physical healing. Just go. like this man yes. did. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so verse 12, let me read that. He got up, took his mat, and walked in full walked out in full view of them all. <laughs> this amazed everyone and they praise God saying we have never seen anything like this Amen. look at God look <laughs> at God look at uh, God I can imagine you know the man through the bed probably on his shoulder said look at me <laughs> <laughs> look he what God can do he didn't even have to say anything all he had to do was walk right he was, yeah, he's I paralyzed. came carried I came carried and you all saw me lowered down and now you see me not only walking, mm-hmm. but I picked up my own mat Strength. that I was carried in mm-hmm. on, and I'm walking out. Oh, man. And the God. people had to say, this is so amazing. Mm-hmm. We have never seen anything like this. You know, pretty sure they've seen this man around before, you know. They knew he, he was paralyzed. Right. Oh, look at God. Look, look at, at God, God, look at God. He is worthy of all praise, and all honor, honor and, and glory. He surely is. So look, that we're, we're at the end of the scripture, and we want to remember our goals. Our goals, one was to be able to tell the story of mm-hmm. the paralyzed man. And then we wanted to look at the different perspectives in this story. So we looked at it from the perspective of the friends that were carrying the man and their faith. We looked at the perspective of the paralyzed man 
who needed that spiritual healing to be able to receive his physical healing. Mm-hmm. And we looked at it from the perspective of the teachers of the law who came face to face with the Messiah that they had been studying about, but they didn't recognize him, but he's showing complete explicit proof. Yes. Yes. That he is God. Amen. Right there with him. Right. And then of course we had Jesus perspective, Uh which pretty much was, I am that I am. Mm, (laughs) So true. All right. All right. So we we just wanted everybody to remember if you have if you have been saved you have the spiritual healing that you need mm-hmm. if you have some unrepented sin all you have to do like Sherman Cash said is recognize that godly sorrow and repent earnestly meaning you really mean it yes. you do not want to do that sin again you can you can fake it and say you you repent when you know that you are going to do that sin again but god already yes, knows it does. but once you get to that point that you really want to leave that alone forever mm-hmm. you are forgiven yes. even if you slip again god understands where you're coming from mm-hmm. jesus knows your heart yes. and he will forgive you you ask him to help you with that, and you can be freed of that Amen. if you will. And once you are spiritually healed, then you approach the Lord for whatever physical healing that you need. Amen. All right? Yes. All so right. true. I'm going to let you close us in prayer, okay. unless you have some more words you want to say. I'm good. That's my favorite. One of my favorite verses, number four, when they tore the roof off. Okay. The confidence and faith of a a friend, a true friend. Okay. God is good. God Let is us good. pray. Heavenly Father, we recognize that you have power and authority both to forgive sin and to heal sickness. We ask you to forgive us and say, and we ask you to forgive us, Father. And we thank you for all you've done and doing and will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.